guys and welcome to this video you is here this is a second tutorial from the series of how to make your own multiplayer game with socket io iogs and some ecmascript 2015 okay so what we did last time and where we stopped we created a simple client server application that connects to socket io to the server and receives a message called hello and it displays the message on the uh, chat window so our whole project consists of just three files client js which is a client side code index html that has a markup and finally server js that is a server code that iogs is running and this server just serves the file and sends the hello message to anybody who connects so you got the new user hello user etc so what's our goal for this video Today we want to do something more interesting. So first we want to enable a chat. So whenever somebody sends a message, so typing here, hi guys, everybody should see this message, right? Right now it doesn't do anything. And our second task would be to match players together. So if two players join the server, they will be automatically matched and they will start to play a game. This is the simplest possible matching mechanism. Of course, later you can implement something more complex like lobby where players can challenge each other or some rating boards where you can find the player that corresponds to your level. You can't really speak about level in rock, paper, scissors, but still what we will do today is the simplest possible matching mechanism and both players who will join in the game will receive a message you are playing now right and that will be the scope of this video so stay with me and let's start from our first goal so we want to make chat working and to make chat working we first need to make sure that we can send messages from the client and to do that we'll of course have to handle this form somehow right so whenever i type something I want to send it to the server. So let's go to our client GS. I'll collapse my project view. I don't really need it right now. Uh, let's go to the client GS and we have on message that is a function that is registered to print messages in the chat window. Now we have the opposite. Let's call it function send message. Actually, we don't need even a function here, I think, right? So what we will do here is we will add an event listener to this form, right? There is a form in, uh, in this window. I go to developer tools and look up the elements. This guy is a form. Let me expand it. So here, I want to listen to a submit event on this form. And whenever that happens, I want to grab whatever the value is in the input and send it to socket io so let's do that so firstly i'll find the form on the page document get element by id i think this form has an id right yep chat form so i'll get the chat form secondly whenever add event listener whenever the following event is happening and event is submit. Whenever somebody is trying to submit a form, I want to call my function that as an argument, this function will receive the event object itself. We'll need that event object. You'll see in a minute why. Notice that here we cannot use our sexy uh, syntax with arrow functions. Why? Because not every browser is supporting that yet. It's actually uh, not at all. So. Our option is to use a transpiler and compile our code from ECMAScript 6 to ECMAScript 5. It is also possible, but that would make our workflow a little bit more complex. We'll show how to do that in later videos, but right now we'll just stick to a small old school ECMAScript 5 syntax since there is not much code to write on a client side. More, more, more code is to be written on server. So let's do that. Whenever we've got submit, First, let's test if this concept work at all, right? So let's add the message from the text box to the chat itself. Firstly, I need a value of a message. Where is the value? The value is right here, input ID chat input. Okay, so let me get the input. Input equals document get element by ID. And this is chat input. And what I really want to get is a value inside of that input, input.value. That's my text that I want to save, right? Immediately afterwards, I would like to clear the input. So 
I set the value to empty string. This way I can type the message, hit enter, and the window is instantly cleared, the input field is instantly cleared, and I can start typing the second message. It's pretty much like Skype works, like all the instant messengers work. Finally, since we have already processed the form submit event, right? We don't want to let browser do anything else with this form because by default, the browser will try to reload the page and send the form data somewhere to the server and show the page again. We don't want that at all. And to prevent browser from doing this kind of thing, we will call prevent default on the event object. That way we tell please do not do anything else with this event and with this form because we already have done everything that we wanted to do. And finally, we've got value, but we never use it. Probably we should do something. Let's let's call on message and send the value there. So what that will do? It will print the message straight away in the same window. So let's see if that works. Let's reload the page. I say hi, and hi appears in the uh, in the chat field. That's what I wanted to get. Test one two three. So it works, it doesn't yet go to the server, but it works at least. So the client side code is almost ready. So how do we send the message to the server now? Oh, it's very, very easy. Here, instead of on message, what we will do, we will do just like in server side code. Remember what we did? We did sock emit. And when we emitting from the server, the event goes back to the client and you can catch it on the client. But this time we'll do the opposite. So we'll emit the event from the client and it will end up on the server. So what we want to emit, we want to emit msg again, our message. And we want to send a value to the server. Right, so this way the event will go to the server, but right now the server doesn't yet know what to do with this event, right? And to do that, we need to add a listener on that object, on that particular object that corresponds to that particular user. So for each user individually, you can set up those listeners and do different logic depending on what you want to do. And since our logic is getting bigger, I want to remove here this one line fat arrow function and I want to create a normal usual function to represent my logic. These fat arrow functions are really used only to make your life easier and make the code smaller. If you have the complex code, it's probably better to create the normal function. I'll call this function on connection. It will receive socket. I'll copy this part from our previous function. I'll leave this hello kind of like it. This way I know that the client has connected to the server, they work together, the handshake has completed. It makes me know that I'm on the right path and the client knows about the server. So now what I want to do, I want to add another event listener for this particular socket. So whenever from this socket, I will receive something like MSG, whenever this client sends me MSG, what I want to do here, I'll use again, I'll use the fat arrow functions because it's nice here. Uh, what I want to do, I want to send the text that I will receive as a parameter from this event. I want to send it to everybody. And how do I do it with socket IO? Well, it's super easy. Instead of calling soc.emit, you can call io.emit. And this way, socket IO will broadcast this event to every subscribed user. So what I will do, I will emit of a message of type msg. Basically, I'm just getting the message and sending it back to everybody broadcast. I'll just take the text and emit it as it is. So on connection is the function that is called whenever we connect. We emit hello and finally we add a listener for MSG event type. Whenever that happens, we send the text that we received from one client to every other client connected to the server. Easy. So now let's test this small setup. Let's see if that works. How do you think? Will it work? I think it will. So ready to work, at least no compilation errors. Now I'll refresh my page. At least my own client should receive back the message that I'm sending. Hi, I'm sending hi. And I received hi back. That's nice. This hi is different from the other hi because this hi went all the way through the server and back. So now just to make sure that this thing works as I want it to do, I'll spawn the second client. It's already connected again. You see that hello message and hi from other client. 
send and see the message popped up in both in the left client and in the right client. That means that broadcasting works perfectly. So the first task is complete. Now what about the second task? Let me remind you what was our second task. We wanted to make sure that two people who connect to the server will be joined in a rock, paper, scissors match and then they will be playing. But play mechanics will be in the next videos. So right now what we want to do and each pair of people that join the server will be automatically sent to a new game, to a new match. Let's think how to do that. So what happens when the first guy joins the server and here's our server code on connection is called and there is no, no other players on the server. How do we know that there is no other players? Well, the simplest way to do that would be to keep a local variable. Let's call this variable waiting player. And we will hold here any player that is waiting for a second one to join the server and to play. Waiting player. Okay, now whenever a new player joins, we need to check if waiting player is there, if there is somebody else waiting, then we can join this to the new one and the waiting player into a match. If there is nobody waiting, well, then you are unlucky and the one who connected is a waiting player. So let's implement that code here in on connection listener. So what we'll do if waiting player, if it is not null essentially, so if there is somebody playing here, both waiting player and the connected player will receive a message saying match starts. Match starts. Okay, and the connected player receives the message saying match starts and the waiting player himself receives the message that match starts. Finally, since these two are playing together, now there are no waiting player anymore and we should express that. So there is no waiting player, there should be no waiting player. So waiting player equals null. This way, the next guy who joins, the third guy who joins the server will become a waiting player again. So what is in the other case, right? So if there is no waiting player, that means that the one who joined is a waiting player now. So waiting player equals sock, socket that just joined. And we can also send him a message so that he knows that, well, we remember about you, we're just waiting for another guy to join and then you'll play. So let's have send him a message. Emit, what are we emitting? MSG message. You are waiting for a second player. Done. Okay, so now this is already a simple matching solution. Even though the server does not keep track of the pairs of players that are playing, but the players will receive their pairs, right? So let's see how that works in practice. Let's restart the server to make sure we're running the most recent version of the code. And now restart match starts. Restart, you're waiting for a second player. If you reload one of them, simulating the other one to, to join, you are waiting for the second player. Now, again, reload the right player, match starts. So each two players who join will be joined in the match, right? So right now this code is way too far from being perfect because we are not handling disconnect events, right? So if, if the waiting player has been disconnected, we will not know about that if he just dropped from waiting. For now, this is a basic working mechanism. Now we could add some more event handling here to make this code better. And the last thing that I will do in this video, in the next videos, will make this code better, actually much better. We'll handle all those cases like disconnected players, like players who are disconnected in the middle of the game. What happens if, you're, uh, if your opponent dropped? You're winning too much. So the other guy says like, ah, I don't want to play with you. I want to play with somebody else. He dropped. So in this case, you should probably become a waiting player, right? So we'll all we'll implement all that logic in upcoming videos. But for now, I just want to get rid of this thing. I, I really, really, really don't like it. Match starts is duplicated twice. And at least I want to make a constant out of it. Or a function. Function notify match starts. It accepts a socket. What I can now do 
I can copy this code. Actually, you know what, since it always will be several players notifying the match start, I can have SOC A and SOC B here. And then do something fancy. I'll create the array like, like this. SOC A and SOC B to both of them for each. And now I can use arrow functions again. And for each socket we want to do an emit, a message saying match starts. I like my code much better. I don't have much copy paste. I hate copy paste because if you copy paste a mistake, you have not to forget to fix the mistake in every copy pasted place. Supporting such code is much easier. So notify match starts, waiting player and sock both. Now let's quickly see if that works. Ready to work. Match starts, match starts. They have been reconnected. These guys, they just drop the connection. By the way, notice what will happen. I'll just now drop the connection. And then I'll restart the server. And you look, look at this place carefully. Look what will happen with the chat windows here. So I'm restarting the server right now. Each client is trying to reach back to the server and they are getting the connection errors, right? But whenever I will restart the server, hey, both clients reconnected. This receives hello, meaning it is again connected back to the server. And they both receive match starts because there are exactly two players waiting for the match and that's how they are matched. So I hope that you liked this video. In the next videos, we'll implement the actual gameplay logic and we'll send those rock, paper, scissors turns and make sure that the server knows how to play rock, paper, scissors to decide who won. So if you like this video, stay with me. In the next video, we'll finish our simple game and then we'll do the polishing. Thank you very much for watching.